I'm Dylan Cromart. I'm from CPUT in Cape Town. I've helped convene the SIG for the last two years. CPUT has been convening the SIG, and yeah, there's one or two of us there at, at uh, CPUT that have been helping. Uh, let me just share with you what the Foundation SIG is. <laughs> it brings together academic lecturers and academic and staff developers with an interest and experience in working in the many foundation and extended curriculum programs across the different uh, higher education institutions in South Africa to share knowledge, practices, and so forth. Are all of you working in foundation or extended programs? Is there anyone who isn't? No, okay, you're just interested. Oh, you used to, okay, wow. Well, thanks for coming. Okay, this is, um, uh, yeah, this is a few photos from our university that we've, we've taken of ECP students and staff members. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is the agenda for the day. We're going to start off with uh, a video. I'm going to show you a video from last, year's from last year's conference and what we did there. Then I'm going to show you some highlights from the SIG over the last two years. And then I would like very much for... Uh, whoever's representing the institution to for five minutes just share about what's happening in ECP at your institution. Highs, lows, goods, bads, what's been uh, the general feel of ECP. Uh, what universities do we have represented here today? Free 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 UFS? Free yeah. Yeah. We've got TUT. Northwest, welcome. Venda, welcome. Venda is like the diehard at all the foundation related events. Where's your colleague? Oh, oh here he comes now. We were just wondering where you are. Uh, and then you, sir? Also, Free State. All of you, free, wow. I was, yeah. <laughs> right, so um, I just mentioned to your colleague we're going to have a time where we share, where everyone sh just represents the university and shares for five minutes about what's been happening in ECP at the university. Then we're going to talk about SIG management details, and this is uh, especially for those who have been involved with the SIG for a while, but also if you're a new member, that's also okay, we can discuss it. And then we're going to vote for, we're going to actually vote twice. But uh, the last time we're going to vote for a new convening institution. Okay. Considering that UFS is so well represented today, <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, um, but we'll discuss that a bit later. Um, okay, so let me show you the video. So let me just quickly give you a quick, I'm just going to read a little quickly what the video is about and what, what was happening on the day so you have some context. So in 2016, the ongoing student protest threw into sharp focus issues of access, transformation, and the quality and relevance of curriculum and pedagogy in a higher education environment. We know fees must fall, roads must fall, everything had to fall uh, in 2016, right? <laughs> So, as the ECP project, which was once her heralded as the systemic attempt actually to advance transformation in higher education sector, was actually not exempt from scrutiny and interrogation at this time. For this reason, we felt that last year's conference was a good opportunity uh, for the broader ECP community to reflect on whether the founding values and principles of ECP still actually had currency especially in light of the ongoing debates and calls for introspection and a shift away from business as usual. So we hosted a special dialogue session, the SIG, hosted a special dialogue session during the SIG session, and it was facilitated by Dr. Sarah Henkerman, and we sought to engage ECP lecturers and researchers and administrators around the value of our espoused values, principles, ethos, that frame the ECP policy and that in turn underpin much of our work. So, and we used dialogue to underpin our discussion. It was, it was quite a lot of dialogue happening. And we made a short video, which I'm going to show you to you now, but which is also available on our YouTube channel, which I will share with you also a bit later. The Heltasa Foundation Special Interest Group held a special dialogue session at the annual ICED Heltasa Conference in November 2016 in Cape Town. The session titled, Business as Usual? Reflecting on ECP through Dialogue, 
was attended by over 25 conference delegates and represented at least 10 institutions across South Africa. The session was facilitated by Dr. Sarah Henkerman and offered the ECP community an opportunity to look forward by taking into account current debates and topical themes confronting the contemporary South African higher education sector. Dr. Henkerman explained that the dialogue would be structured to include individual, shared and group engagements that focused on the core questions introduced in the event invitation. Firstly, what are the common understandings of the values, principles and practices associated with ECP generally and broadly? And secondly, how relevant are these values given current or ongoing student protests in the university sector? Should these change? And if so, how should they change? A primary aim of the process was not to arrive at a set of solutions, but rather to explore possibilities framed around the core questions proposed by the session. Participants were asked to reflect on the questions individually and use written notes to articulate their ideas, positions and perspectives. Colleagues were then asked to share their reflections, preferably with colleagues from a different university context. A key aim here was to encourage listening, think more deeply about personally held perspectives and then refine ideas before taking this into the small group environment. Session delegates were also encouraged to work in groups of five or six and ensuring a healthy representation from different institutions. Groups were asked to focus more sharply on addressing the guiding questions. A group appointed scribe was asked to capture the key sentiments raised by the group members for presentation to the larger group. The first, uh, when we discussed the first question, the first uh, word, that, the first phrase that came to mind obviously was access for success. When we were asked the question, is it still relevant, is ECP still relevant, there was a loud um, call saying yes, it is still very relevant um, because the point of ECP is to address the very challenges that students are um, crying out about. When we thought about the question, what needs to change? We're realizing that the ECP agenda is really the agenda designed to find solutions to these problems and therefore ECP as a conversation and as a community of practice needs to evolve and grow in order to take on these new challenges that students actually, in fact, we need to be leading in many ways in the university the solutions to these problems. And that within the community there seems to be um, almost like a coalescing of shared uh, values and principles and it seems to be within staff, with staff and with students. I mean there's some uneven un uptake but generally and if we just go by the people in the group we shared similar um, values and principles and, and in many ways it mirrored what Dylan was saying so I'm not going to go through that. But there seems to be challenges which resonate primarily within institutional structures. Okay, and it's the arrangements around ECP, so it might be around staffing, uh, the status between students, so, so for us we felt that the stigma which is often something that describes either ECP, ECP students, ECP staff, is something that's really experienced with staff, not with the students. So once the students are in ECP, they don't see the stigma, we see the stigma, or we, we stigmatize staff stigmatize students and it's usually not ECP staff, it's staff sitting outside of ECP that do the stigmatizing. But in terms of the future, again, echoing the stuff that that group, the best group in the room, <laughs> is around the intensification of, of ECP. We, we, we didn't really unpack that, but we felt that there needed to be an intensification. Okay, And it might be that it's the, the aim is to bring the outsiders in. We want to enable epistemological access and participation so that students can successfully complete their studies in their chosen field. We actually looked at the question of epistemological access a little bit more carefully because some people weren't clear about that. Um, and it's sort of giving support, caring support um, within the disciplines themselves but in a broader sense starting in foundation level because often students don't really know where they want to be. The foundation and extended curriculum program is far more important than ever. Forging and consolidating a strong and vocal ECP community of practice was regarded as a key and achievable strategy 
that especially the foundation SIG should promote and encourage. While the challenges faced by the wider university sector are numerous, collective commitment to addressing these challenges can ensure movement forward. It remains important that the ECP community is heard, so cultivating a culture of research will be central. The Foundation SIG has to play a pivotal mediation role and help create various platforms where the collective ECP voice can be heard and amplified. Okay, so that was, um, that was last year. I'm sure some of you saw your faces there, if you were there. Um, okay, now on to um, the 2016 and 27 highlights of the SIG. So, okay. So for the 2016 and 27 year, 2017 year, sorry, the SIG has been convened by myself, Dylan Gromos, and um, Lynn Coleman, but not by us specifically, but by CPUT. We are just the represent. We have just been the ones who have been working at CPUT with regards to um, the, the foundation SIG. And I'm a ECP lecturer. I lecture marketing, and Lynn is a academic developer working in the unit for um, for higher education development at CPUT. Okay, so the foundation SIG strategy has focused for the last two years has focused on promoting a culture of practice sharing amongst institutional partners what we found is that staff at institutions kind of get into silos often um, especially in ECP and what we wanted to encourage is for there to be cross institutional sharing as much as possible and even just sharing within an institution <laughs> is sometimes challenging uh, so we wanted to encourage that as much as possible. Um, so, and such practice sharing initiatives operated at institutional levels, um, but also traversed regional and national levels. For example, there's been national conferences, regional conferences, and so forth. Right. Okay, so the strategy has focused on sharing best practice and common ways in which that happens can be practice sharing circles. This is something we actually um, introduced to the ECP community, uh, I think it was last year, where instead of presenting a paper in a normal fashion, where someone stands here and everyone kind of just listens, um, a per you'd sit around a table and the person would share a short five to 10 minute practice and then there would be dialogue. And we found this to be very valuable. In fact, there's a video on our uh, YouTube channel explaining how it all happens. And then also, of course, regional seminars, symposia, and colloquia. And then, of course, online sharing. We wanted to encourage online sharing platforms um, to help leverage best practice. For example, we've recorded um, conference presentations, put them on the website, on the blog, and um, encourage practice sharing through digital means. And the hope overall has been that by leveraging the work of educators, researchers in the field of ECP provisions and making it readily available to anyone, that the greater purpose of ECP would be more effectively achieved on a national and institutional level. All right, so here are some of the conferences that have taken place. In 2016, there was a regional ECP symposium in the Western Cape, and the focus was on the role of extended programs in facilitating social inclusion. Then there was the 2016 Foundation Provisioning Colloquium in Bloemfontein, which focused on foundation provisioning within the South African higher education institutions, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, evolving towards academic sustainability. Then there was the this year's regional ECP symposium in the Western Cape, which focused on responsive and inclusive curricula and pedagogic practices, understanding transitions within the university context. And then, of course, the colloquium, which took place quite recently here in Durban, UT arranged that as well, um, which focused on pushing the frontiers of foundation provisioning, reflecting on more than a decade of practice. Are we winning? 
So a, a big focus of that colloquium was to say, is this actually working? And I think that's what a lot of us often ask in ECP. Is this actually working? What do the numbers say? Are we winning? Yes, no. Sometimes we are. All right, then, of course, there's um, our website. This is the front page of the website. And these are some of the other elements of the website uh, just below. So we would like to, we, li we use the website to facilitate practice sharing, research, and general networking and connecting amongst ECP practitioners. It's designed to be like a hub which links everyone together and everything we're doing together. And it's also used to promote events. So when there's an event coming up, we'll often post it on the blog. So I'll give you the blog link a bit later. It would be great if all of you could join the blog and then you will get updates. Okay, then of course we have our YouTube channel. And so we can make videos available. Uh, for example, I'm recording this presentation, so this one will be available for those who couldn't be here. And I also we felt that a lot of work gets put into developing a, a research paper and presenting it in front of a lot of people. But often the only people who get to benefit from it are those that are in the room when you're presenting. What about those who couldn't be there? And what about... I don't know, what about someone who doesn't even know anything about it and then research, you know, wants to search for you and finds your, your, your video? Wouldn't that be great if we could record um, our presentations and make them available to other people? So, we want, so, so we've created a, a YouTube channel which includes videos like that as well for those who, um, who record them. And when we post it up on the blog, it looks like this. You'll see the video of the presentation and you don't see the person's face you just see the PowerPoint and you hear the voice and then we include the the PowerPoint presentation as well and a little abstract of the, the presentation and we have a Creative Commons license which means that anyone can share it and use it but they're not allowed to change it and they have to give credit to you as the author Okay, and then we have a Facebook group, a closed Facebook group, to facilitate informal sharing and connecting. Thus far, there hasn't really been much activity on the Facebook group, but we hope that the institution that's going to be convening from next year forward will be able to encourage sharing on the Facebook group going forward. And then, um, something that I've been working on, I've been involved in, funda in the foundation signal for three years, and something that I've been working on from the beginning is a database. A simple database of, if possible, all the ECP practitioners in South Africa. So that it's simple and easy to get hold of people <laughs> that are uh, kind of have a similar. So if, if I'm an ECP lecturer in the business faculty, I'd love to know, or in marketing, I'd love to be able to just contact someone who's in marketing and say, What are you guys doing there? You know? And even to create, I don't know. Anyway, so, so I've been working on this for three years and some of the things that I would like, it, that I believe it can enable is to enable breast practice sharing. Uh, a simple way of getting hold of other people. Facilitate national inter, inter institutional collaborations and research projects. Uh, nationwide connection and support. Sometimes we feel so alone and isolated, but I, I feel this is a way to uh, create connection and support. And then an easy way to promote your events. You know, so that people come. And then, of course, a sense of solidarity, community, and oneness. A sense of family. So we hope to make this database uh, available to the entire ECB community and so that and then enable everyone to add their details, add the details of their colleagues, make sure that it's accurate, and so on, but after the conference I will communicate the details of this to all of you. I just need to get your contact details. I forgot to bring a little <laughs> something for you to write them on. So if someone could maybe assist me, thank you. <laughs> I can see someone's already on the ball. Uh, right, the date, the SIG management plan. This is something that I've been thinking about. I, I come from a management background. Uh, I don't come from an educational background. So when I look at Things like SIGs, I look at it from a management perspective. How can we ensure effective 
growth and longevity of the SIG. So what is a SIG? Okay, for those who don't know, it's a special interest group is a community within a large organization, and our larger organization, of course, is Health Plaza, with shared interests. The aim of SIG is to share information and develop a wider knowledge base within the field of interest. Okay, so that's what a SIG is. Now let's, I want to talk about the Foundation SIG history. The Foundation SIG has had something of a bumpy history. <laughs> um, there have been times that the SIG has been very well managed, and then there have been times that it's been very poorly managed. Thus far, the success of the SIG has been dependent on the convener every year. For example, in 2014, when I was at the first, my first SIG meeting, we sat down and there was no convener. And we were like, well, what are we going to do? What's going on? Um, and we had to, as the members, we, had to, we were left to figure things out for ourselves, basically. Um, so it was very disorganized um, in 2014. So what happened at that, at that meeting, uh, Sianda Anglabati from the University of Fort Hare was chosen as the new SIG chair. And Tina Makubela from Rhodes and myself we joined to assist her with CPT, uh, CPT, with SIG administration. And in 2015, we started putting together a SIG database as well as online platforms like the Facebook group and the website and so forth. And then there was a successful colloquium run at the University of Fort Hare. Um, sorry, it was in East London. It was the University of Fort Hare and Walter Sisulu that did it together. Right. So, sorry, at the 2015 Health Tasso conference, it was decided by the SIG members that in order to facilitate better SIG convening, instead of choosing a specific chairperson, we would choose an institution as the convener. Okay? And then with one person at that institution kind of leading it, and it was felt that it would have the following benefits. It would enable university the, that university's resources to be used to help run the SIG. It would encourage a team approach because many people in the ECP or the foundation programs could be included in helping run the SIG. One person didn't have to carry the burden, which is what was happening before. And the team would all be from the same institution, so it's very easy to work together. When we were when when um, Sianna was running it with myself and Tina. Tina was at Rhodes, I'm at CPUT, and she's at Fort Hare. You know, it's almost impossible to run something effectively when you're in the different parts of the country, uh, except via, via email. But things become, to become busy. Even Lynn and myself have been running it now. We realize, unless we meet together, you know, once a term, nothing gets done. <laughs> so that's what we did. We had a, a termly meeting where we discussed what needs to happen, and then we would go and, and do what we need to do. Okay, then we also decided on a two-year convening cycle. Um, it, would, it was felt that it would have the following benefits. It would help give more time to get into the role of convenership. It would have, there would be more opportunities to, to facilitate activities. Like, for example, last year, we were able to, instead of running an AGM like this, we were able to run a session where we did interact, an interactive session, which was, which was lovely. Um, it created more momentum, so we could do more things and get into the role and, and, and just create more momentum for the SIG. It enabled more staff at our institution to get involved. It, inf it facilitated better planning uh, and better implementation cycles, so we could plan last year for things we wanted to do this year, and which needed more time to plan and we could, yeah, so it just it helped for better planning and enabled better growth of the SIG. And we at CBT feel that it should continue in this way, a two-year convening cycle, because we feel it's beneficial. Okay, then I'd like to uh, propose something that was proposed in 2014, but I'd like to bring it forward again, and it is, some, it is the executive committee. So in 2014, there was a proposal for a national executive committee that's made up of one person from each institution in the country. 
and th which would remain the same from year to year. Every year, it, it, would, it would pretty much remain the same until that person is like, we want to pass it on to someone else at the institution. Okay, so because of the fractured nature of the SIG at that point, the proposal wasn't implemented. We kind of had to start from scratch, to be honest with you, in terms of the SIG. But because the SIG is a lot more stable now, we, we feel to put forward this proposal again. Um, because we feel that it would give the SIG longevity and would assist with retaining SIG memory. And would help it actually grow instead of... Yeah. So this is our current... <laughs> This is our current model. Uh, you'll see I've got the SIG convenorship versus SIG consistency. Okay, convenorship is the dark blue line and the consistency of the SIG is the light blue line. So at the moment we have a management model that looks like this. Each year, the year-to-year -year consistency of the SIG is entirely dependent on the quality of the convenorship. If the convenor is good, the consistency of the SIG goes up, the quality of the SIG goes up. If the convenor acts poorly, then it goes down. And we can't, we can't run something like this, you know. Um, people invest time, people invest effort to be involved in something like this. You want to see it grow. You, you don't want to, you know, sometimes it's happening, sometimes it's not happening. So we'd, we'd like to promose, pr pr propose this model, which is the, the one which includes the executive committee. In this model, we have an executive SIG committee that's made up of one person from each institution, like I've said. The committee remains the same from year to year and works alongside the convening institution. And its role, the committee's role, is to ensure the longevity and the consistency of the SIG by supporting the convening institution, being a point of connection for the institutions represented, and helping retain SIG memory. It wouldn't involve a lot. It would, it, it would mostly involve one meeting a year, probably, if you're able to make it, where everyone from the country, all the, that, er, all the universities represented, come together with the convening institutions people, and we discuss, and we chat, and we brainstorm what's going to happen, where are we all at, because at the moment we're not reaching each other. And this forum is not enough, because not everyone comes to help TASA. We need something, and uh, the colloquium is great. It might be actually a good thing to have it at the same time as the colloquium, possibly. But we can discuss that. So the com committee's role is represented by the blue line, the light blue line, sorry, and uh, the, the convener's role by the kind of darker line. As you can see, no matter the quality of the convening institution, the growth of the SIG remains consistent. In addition, having such a committee also means more support for the convening institution, which means a much higher likelihood of succeeding. Because if you don't, if you don't have people there to help you, you kind of just, I don't know, things fall by the wayside. So as I've said, the committee's responsibilities would include meeting together and being like a think tank where we can thrash things out throughout the year. All right, so good candidates for the committee would include People that have been involved in convenership before. People who manage ECP provisions and support at an institutional level at a university. And people who are just passionate about ECP. <laughs> right? So these are the types of people we, yeah, who would be good for uh, member, as members of the executive committee. Okay. That's the proposal. I would now like your questions or thoughts regarding this proposal. I see a nodding <laughs> of Mr. Painter. <coughs> okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> so, let's vote. <laughs> then we have to do things by a vote. Um, if you like the idea, I proposed it. Does anyone second the proposal? Okay. We have. All right. We have seconds. Um, we have multiple seconds, thirds, and fourths. Okay, um, so can we vote all in favor? Is that everyone? Yes? Everyone's in favor. Okay, that's amazing. Wonderful. <laughs> the way that we'll probably do it is I'll probably send an email out to everyone and I will ask for nominations at each institution. People that you would like to nominate, who you feel should be on the executive committee, and we'll do it like that. 
so that it's an inclusive process that involves everyone. Okay? Right, so that's that. Now we get to the new convener show. Who should be the new convening institution? Again, I've got all of you here. Before we get to that vote, um, I just want to discuss some of the roles. What does it mean to convene? Now, these are not prescriptive. Okay? These are things that we have found, that I've come to see now over the last two years, of some of the things that are included, and that could be included in running or convening a suit. Okay? Obviously, to help facilitate most SIG activities, this doesn't necessarily mean that you're directly involved in everything. It might just mean that you're a point of contact. Okay? So you might have to host, assist with hosting colloquia symposia. Um, UT hosted a colloquium this year, um, and yeah, uh, and we held one, or CPT held one in, 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 in Cape Town. So it means assisting where you can. Being present, if possible, at national and regional events. Uh, not all of them necessarily, obviously within your budget and, and where is possible, but it's nice to have someone from the SIG there. Um, facilitating sessions, if possible, at national and regional events. There's a lot of scope. If you're coming and you're representing Altar, so you're representing the SIG, there's opportunity to do cool stuff. <laughs> you know, like we did practice sharing circles at the one uh, symposium. It was great. To facilitate face-to-face -face practice sharing, if possible, at your institution. And we've learned a lot about this. As I said, Lynn Coleman has, has really done a lot of work in this. And we're gonna, we, when we meet with this institution, whoever it's going to be, we're going to share what we've learned about that. And this is to facilitate online knowledge sharing, which I will help you with. I'll still help with a blog. Uh, you won't be alone with that. Um, you could, I guess you could call me the website manager. So you'll just say, Dylan, can you please put this on the website? And I'll put it up for you. Okay, so to facilitate online knowledge sharing, and the Facebook group will be quite easy to facilitate. To post new events on the blog, to facilitate dialogue on the Facebook group, to post new videos on the YouTube channel. And then of course to facilitate this yearly session at the Help Tasha conference. To build on the database. <laughs> That's going to be a big, uh, a important job. We want to try and build on a database as much as possible. And then of course, to communicate with people from Help Tasha, you often have to just tell them hey, this is what we're doing, and then they send you an email, and it's, it's, not, it's not major. And then, of course, anything else that comes up during the time. But this is roughly uh, some of the roles. Okay. Now that you know kind of what's required or, or what it's about, we can vote for the new institution. Are there any nominations? It has to be, obviously, an institution that's represented here today. We've got... Durban, at UT, we've got UFS, we've got TUT, we've got, sorry I forgot your, uh, Northwest, we've got Venda. Does anyone, you, you are nominating UFS, okay, does anyone second that nomination? Okay, TUT does, do you accept your nomination? <laughs> You accept your okay. You accept your nomination. Are there any other nominations? Yes. You nominate Venda. Is there a second for that nomination? Yes. Okay. Shubnam seconds that. Venda, do you accept your nomination? Are you not in a space to accept? For now, no. Okay. Yeah. But just, uh, just on that note, who is doing the colloquium next year? Uh, it is you. Yeah. I see. <laughs> <laughs> is that, no, 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 is no, that no, why no. you don't accept it? No, no, no. no. Uh, because uh, <laughs> most of us, we are now in our almost uh, last year on our PhD. All of us. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's not a big time. All of you in the ECP? All of us in the ECP. All, I all see. yeah. I see. Okay, well that's that's wise. Yeah. That's good. We want people who can be involved yeah, it take it back for now. after that. Yeah, so once you've once you've graduated, it's time. Okay, fine. Are there any other nominations? Does anyone want to nominate themselves? Why don't you keep it for now? We'll keep it for now. UFS? Okay. 
You fish, you're, you're willing? Fantastic. Um, can we vote? All in favor of UFS? Congratulations, UFS. <laughs> Would you like to say anything? UFS, you, you, the floor is yours. You can say something. It's <laughs> a huge challenge. Uh, I think everybody involved would like to reach those goals that we set. Um, but I, I like the community. I like the institutional representatives. So we see that as a, as a huge family participation, mm -hmm. not driven by just one person or, or one institution. So the success also depends on the participation yeah. of the other institutions. Yeah. Otherwise, it's really not good. So we have fifty institutions. So, I want to thank you, but I thank you for the vote of the uh, conference. And we are really trying to not to disappoint you. And uh, fortunately, my colleagues can be good. And now we have the same form of the form part of the institutional uh, special interest group for good. the Senate curriculum program. Good. Thank you. Um, I don't know, I'm not supposed to do, but thank you very much for what you've done. Yes. Last, for the yes. time being, it's a hell of a work. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we applaud you for the work that you've done and for your future assistance as well. So of course. Thank you very much for this and uh, we're very grateful to you. My pleasure. Thank you. Can, can we on this point ask okay. that? Everyone who are representing an institution here, just emailing a list of people involved there in so that we can start with the, with the database. Okay. Because the moment when you've got some people in the database and you start communicating to them, they add and add more people right. to the yeah. database. So if everyone sitting here can just provide Help. the list of their institution and maybe people that they've worked with at other institutions yeah. in extension, in extended programs well. can help a lot. I, I agree with you, but you know, even if that person can provide or really get the list, then or sure. really get what they say somebody. Okay, what I'll do is I, I, we're making a list now of everyone who's had and I'll email everyone and we'll go from there um, and, and request mm -hmm. it from there. Okay, um, that's it from me, I think. Thank you. Um, there was something else. Oh, could all of you please write down quickly, if you have a piece of paper, the executive, Shubhnam, you want to say something? Yeah. Okay, the executive committee, we're going to meet with the executive committee now of El Tasa, and they would like you to just write down something that we can take in, uh, into the meeting, of things that you would like to ha have happening with the SIG. That, that's what they're asking. They want us to discuss things related to what you would like for the SIG uh, going forward. But, but don't you have to talk the way I, forward? I mean, I, I know what our way forward is, but no, maybe there are other things. No, we're adopting them. Yeah. Yeah. Are you adopting them? Yeah. One of the things that we want, okay. we want like, you know, to be in contact. Okay. Regular in contact. Okay. Not, we are not meeting, but yes. communication. Yeah. Yes. Your, yeah. what, uh, your presentation, what you did, if you can just speak on that okay. to work. Okay. And please. <laughs> You know, we, you and the others, let's say we've done a lot as we are presenting. But now that the other institution is taking, we would we, we, we like to keep the same standard of more. So even you know, yeah. Now you're going to be the main man there to help yeah. us until. Yeah, please. Absolutely. Yeah, we don't want to go down again. We're not. We just That's what the executive committee is for. We're going to move forward. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Shubnam, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I just want to. Um, so, You mean another? Oh, yeah. and was the beauty there to say yes? <laughs> James was very hesitant to <laughs> Of course he was. <laughs> <laughs> but people were very keen. Okay. People were very keen to do so, uh, the following year. 
uh, to chat to Linda about that. I, I think for this, because the, bec um, I hear what, are you saying we should do choose another person to 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 um, convene the SIG as well? No, 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 not that. Oh. The colloquium. Oh, I see. Well, I guess what we'd have to do is we'd have to be. I'd have to chat to them and James. Okay, because they're the ones who are going to have to organise it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Lynn is going to have to organise it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll chat to them. Okay. Regional. I hear you. Yeah. I don't know. Thus far, the, the, nas the, the national ones have happened in the north, yeah. thus far. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the symposium... I don't think that... I think the symposium is something additional. But obviously, if, if in that year CPT is hosting it, I don't think we'll host the symposium as well. Yeah. I think we'll just host the national colloquium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think let's keep it at the as a national um, colloquium. Okay, any other thoughts, comments? Questions? Is anyone, everyone signed the list? Please, if you can uh, put your name and your details down, I want to add it to our database and then I'll be in contact with you soon about all of this. Okay. Do you have the other group emails that we're using? Most of the guys are not here. If you can just you copy also the uh, old email. Just yes, I'm going to send it to everyone. You can add this one and then use the old one to get it in there. Sure.